now that we've been looking at running files from within Perl, we should also be aware of the way in which Perl scripts are called and how the command line arguments, similar to the arguments that were passed to the CP program or the copy program or the PS program that we saw in the last movie, are handled when we pass them to a Perl script. There is a special array that is immediately available to us when our Perl script starts that we don't have to initialize or define. That's the argv array, and that's spelt with all capitals. This array contains each command line argument in turn. All of our little piece of code here is doing is it's taking each one and printing it out. Let's move over to our text editor and we'll see how this works. Before we write out this script, however, I should point out that because we're running under the Windows system, for some reason that I'm not quite aware of, not being entirely familiar with running Perl scripts under Windows, the reason that we're using Windows as our environment here is for the reason purposes of recording this, these movies rather than because it's necessarily the ideal system. However, the anomaly that I discovered in running scripts under the Windows system is that the arguments that we feed to our scripts are not necessarily available to the script unless we explicitly use the Perl executable and then specify the Perl script after it. If I go over to the command prompt, I'll show you what I mean. We move over to testing and have a look at the different files there. File.pl, if I run it like this, I'm simply typing in the file name and the file association that Windows has set up means that I'm able to invoke the Perl executable automatically without having to specify it on the command line. However, I could have typed in Perl and then file.pl. So Perl is a program and then file.pl is a script that I want to interpret using the Perl program. And it does exactly the same thing, except in the case of when we're trying to take in command line arguments. Now I'm going to change the file.pl script so that what it's doing instead is it's looping over the arguments that we feed to it and it's printing each one of them out in turn separated by a new line. Now let's say at the top here a little line to explain what's going on. Now if we just run file.pl on its own and feed it some meaningless arguments afterwards, it returns no data. It's as if we never gave the file.pl script those arguments at all. However, if we run Perl, and the reason I'm able just to refer to Perl here is that I've included Perl within my path, otherwise we'd have to type out the whole absolute path to the Perl executable. But in this case, we're just running the Perl executable and using it to interpret the file.pl script and we're also passing three command line arguments. When we do it with this syntax, all of the arguments are correctly processed. This is an issue that only really matters in terms of the Windows platform, but is something that you should nonetheless be aware of. Its implications, if we were to run, so I'm going to open up a new script here, and my script is going to say system file.pl ha ha ha. And we're going to call this one script.pl, not terribly imaginative, but the best I could come up with on the spur at the moment. And going back to our command prompt, 
and running script.pl, it's as if script.pl never fed any arguments to the file.pl script. However, if we look at the system function here, we clearly have. All we need to do, however, to rectify the situation is to explicitly refer to the Perl executable that's going to be used to run the file.pl script. We run exactly the same script and what happens here is script runs file.pl and returns the results to the screen. However, this time, because of the way Windows works, we've been able to feed those command line arguments and file.pl has been able to pick them up. Once again, this is not something that would matter on a Unix system because Unix doesn't use file associations for this kind of thing. Unix uses the shebang line at the top of the script to let the operating system know what interpreter to use to make any sense of the script.